In the fog-shrouded streets of Victorian London, whispers of a terrifying entity began to spread like wildfire. Witnesses spoke of a tall, thin figure with eyes that glowed like burning coals, capable of leaping over walls and buildings with inhuman agility. This mysterious assailant, clothed in a tight-fitting suit and flowing cape, was said to breathe blue flames and attack unsuspecting victims with metallic claws. For nearly two centuries, the legend has persisted, evolving with each retelling. From gas-lit alleyways to modern city streets, sightings of this leaping terror have continued to baffle skeptics and fuel the imaginations of believers. Is it merely an urban myth born from the fears of a bygone era, or something more sinister? One question remains. In the shadows of our cities, does this enigmatic figure still lurk, waiting to strike again? Welcome to Freaky Folklore, the podcast where we discover horrifying legends across the world and tell terrifying tales of monsters both ancient and modern. This week we are discussing Spring Hill Jack a terrifying urban legend of Victorian London. spring Jack was known for his inhuman leaps, glowing red eyes, and attacks on unsuspecting victims. This show is part of the EerieCast Podcast Network. Find more terrifying tales at EerieCast.com, such as Destination Terror. You can listen to a new episode every week as I take you to horrifying destinations, both real and mythical. Be sure to follow us on Spotify or your favorite podcasting service. You can leave an honest review on iTunes, too. The more we get, the more we grow, and hopefully, the more monsters we can explore. You can now find Freaky Folklore videos on YouTube as well. If you would like to submit an encounter or suggestions for future episodes, you can email them to carmencarrion at gmail.com. You can also follow me on X or Instagram for information on future episodes. The sleek skyscrapers of the city pierce the overcast sky, their glass facades reflecting the muted glow of street lamps and the constant flow of red brake lights snaking along the congested roads. In the shadow of these modern monoliths, the old London still breathed, cobblestone alleys winding between Victorian brick buildings where hipster cafes and ancient pubs stood side by side. The hum of conversation and clinking glasses spilling out onto the streets, steeped in centuries of history and secrets. Amidst this blend of old and new, in a cozy flat tucked away in a refurbished Georgian townhouse, a different kind of night was unfolding. While most of London slept and reveled, one soul remained awake driven by an insatiable curiosity about the city's darker legends. The warm glow from her window was barely noticeable among the cityscape. But inside, a journey into London's mysterious past was well underway. The blue glow of her laptop screen illuminated Izzy Brown's face, casting shadows that accentuated her furrowed brow. She squinted through her glasses scrolling through yet another archive of Victorian-era newspapers. The clock on her desk blinked at 2.37 a.m., but time had lost all meaning hours ago. spring Jack strikes again, Izzy read aloud, her voice dripping with sarcasm. Witnesses claim devilish figure leapt over 20-foot wall. Yeah, right. What a bunch of rubbish. She leaned back in her chair, stretching her arms stiff from hours of typing. Her tiny London flat was cluttered with the organized chaos of a journalist's life. Stacks of books, a collection of vintage cameras, and an ever-growing pile of notebooks filled with her meticulous handwriting. As a rising star at the Digital Chronicle, London's trendiest online magazine, Izzy had been tasked with writing a piece debunking classic urban legends. Her editor's words still rang in her ears. Make it punchy, make it modern, and for God's sake, Izzy, make it go viral. She had chosen spring Jack, thinking it would be an easy target. A demonic figure leaping over buildings in Victorian London, please. But as she delved deeper into the lore, 
she found herself both frustrated and oddly fascinated by the persistence of the legend. Izzy reached for her coffee mug, finding it empty. She sighed, running a hand through her messy dark hair. Time for a break, she muttered, pushing away from her desk. In the tiny kitchen, she put the kettle on for tea. As she waited for it to boil, Izzy's eyes drifted to the window. The streets of East London were quiet, a far cry from the gaslit alleys where Spring Hill Jack supposedly prowled. For a moment, she allowed herself to imagine what it might have been like. The fog rolling in, gas lamps casting eerie shadows, the sudden appearance of a dark, leaping figure. The kettle's whistle snapped her back to reality. Get it together, Brown, she chided herself. You're here to debunk myths, not indulge in them. Back at her desk, fresh tea in hand, Izzy was about to dive back into her research when a notification pinged. A new email. Probably spam, she thought, but clicked it anyway. The subject line read, spring Hilled Jack Lives. Izzy's fingers hovered over the delete button, but curiosity got the better of her. Izzy didn't believe in coincidences. She opened the email. If you seek the truth about spring Hill Jack, come to the old Whitechapel Foundry at midnight tomorrow. Bring an open mind and someone to watch your back. A chill ran down Izzy's spine, one that had nothing to do with the late hour or the darkness pressing against her windows. She read the email again, her journalistic instincts warring with her common sense. It was probably a prank, or at best, a waste of time. But what if? Izzy bit her lip, then began to type a reply. Her fingers hesitated over the keys. Was she really considering this? It went against everything she stood for as a skeptic and a fact checker. And yet, sometimes, she murmured, echoing her journalism professor, the best way to debunk a myth is to chase it to its source. Decision made, Izzy fired off a quick, non-committal response. As she hit send, she felt excitement at war with apprehension. This could be the break she needed to make her article stand out, to finally prove herself in the cutthroat world of digital journalism. The old Whitechapel foundry loomed before Izzy, a hulking silhouette against the night sky. Its broken windows gaped like toothless maws, and the rusted iron gate creaked ominously in the chill breeze. Izzy checked her phone, 11.58 p.m. She had arrived early, her journalistic instincts overriding her common sense. Izzy hesitated, remembering the email's warning to bring someone to watch her back. But who could she ask? Who would believe her? And if this was real... How could she justify putting someone else in danger? No, she decided. This was her story, her mystery to solve. She would face this mysterious stranger alone. This is insane, she muttered, pulling her jacket tighter around her. The street was deserted, the silence broken only by the distant wail of a siren and the scuttle of unseen vermin in the shadows. As the clock struck midnight, a sound like metal scraping against stone echoed from within the foundry. Izzy's heart leapt into her throat. She fumbled for her phone, activating the video recorder with trembling fingers. Get a grip, Brown, she whispered to herself. It's probably just some kid playing a prank. But as she approached the entrance, a gust of wind extinguished the nearby street lamp, plunging her into darkness. In that moment of blindness, something brushed past her. Something cold and sharp that left a burning sensation on her arm. Izzy yelped, stumbling backward. Her phone's flashlight pierced the darkness, revealing a thin, red line on her forearm where her jacket had been torn. Hello? She called out, her voice quavering. Is anyone there? This isn't funny. <laughs> A low chuckle answered her, seeming to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. Izzy spun around, her flashlight beam dancing wildly across crumbling brickwork and rusted machinery. Then she saw it, a pair of glowing red eyes 
hovering ten feet off the ground. They blinked once and vanished. Izzy's breath caught in her throat. This couldn't be real. It had to be a trick of the light, a hallucination brought on by fear and lack of sleep. But as she backed away, her heel caught on something, sending her sprawling onto the cold, damp ground. Her phone skittered away, its light illuminating a patch of ground nearby. Izzy's eyes widened in horror. There, clearly visible in the mud, was a footprint, but not a human one. It was elongated, with sharp, claw-like indentations at the toes. A shadow fell over her. Slowly, terrified of what she might see, Izzy looked up. A figure stood over her, tall and impossibly thin, cloaked in darkness. Its face was hidden in shadow, save for those burning red eyes. As it leaned closer, Izzy caught the acrid smell of smoke and something metallic, like blood. You sought the truth about spring Hill Jack, a voice hissed inhuman and cold. Are you prepared for what you'll find? A gloved hand tipped with razor-sharp claws reached for her face. Izzy screamed, scrambling backward. Her fingers closed around a piece of broken pipe, and she swung it wildly. The figure leapt back with impossible speed clearing a stack of crates with ease. It landed on the foundry's roof, a good thirty feet up, crouching like some nightmarish gargoyle. The game begins, Isabel Brown, it called down to her. Chase me if you dare, but remember, some truths are better left buried. With a sound like tearing fabric, the figure vanished into the night. Izzy sat there, gasping for breath her mind reeling. The skeptic in her screamed that this was impossible, that there had to be a rational explanation. But as she retrieved her phone with shaking hands, she knew one thing for certain. She was terrifyingly out of her depth. In the fog-shrouded streets of Victorian London, a sinister figure lurked in the shadows, with eyes that glowed like burning coals claws as sharp as daggers, and the uncanny ability to leap over walls and buildings. This mysterious entity struck terror into the hearts of Londoners. His name? spring Hill Jack. Here is a tale of terror that has endured for nearly two centuries. Today we delve into the chilling legend of spring Hill Jack, a supernatural menace that captivated and terrified 19th century England and continues to intrigue us to this day. Our story begins in October 1837, on the outskirts of London. A young servant girl named Mary Stevens was walking to Lavender Hill when she was suddenly accosted by a strange figure who leapt out from a dark alley. The attacker, described as having a terrifying appearance, grabbed her with what she called an iron grip hands. He began to kiss her face while ripping her clothes and touching her with his claws, which were cold and clammy as those of a corpse. Mary's screams attracted several residents who came to her aid, but the strange assailant quickly fled the scene, displaying an inhuman ability to leap over a nine-foot wall with ease. The next day, the figure reportedly jumped in front of a passing carriage, causing the coachman to lose control and crash, resulting in serious injury. These incidents marked the beginning of a series of attacks and sightings that would soon grip London in a state of panic. The press dubbed this mysterious assailant spring Hill Jack due to his remarkable leaping abilities. Witness descriptions of spring Hill Jack varied, but certain features remained consistent. He was often described as a tall, thin man, dressed in a tight-fitting white oilskin suit, or a dark cloak. His most terrifying features were his eyes, which witnesses claimed glowed like red balls of fire. Some accounts described him with sharp metallic claws and a helmet or mask. Others reported that he could breathe blue and white flames from his mouth. But perhaps his most distinctive feature was his incredible agility. spring Jack could reportedly leap over high walls, gates, and even small buildings with ease. Some accounts claim he could jump as high as 20 or 30 feet into the air. 
This superhuman ability not only gave him his name, but also allowed him to quickly escape after his attacks, leaving his victims and pursuers bewildered. While there were numerous reported encounters with spring Hill Jack, a few stand out in the records of this urban legend. One of the most famous incidents occurred on February 19, 1838, involving 18-year-old Lucy Scales and her sister. As they were walking through Limehouse, a figure leapt out in front of them and spat blue flames into Lucy's face, temporarily blinding her. Just a few days later, on February 28, 1838, 18-year-old Jane Alsop answered a knock at her father's door. A man standing in the shadows claimed to be a police officer, saying, For God's sake, bring me a light, for we have caught spring Hill Jack here in the lane. When Jane brought him a candle, the man threw off his cloak, revealing a hideous appearance. He vomited blue and white flame from his mouth and began attacking her with metallic claws. Jane's sister came to her rescue and the attacker fled. These high-profile cases brought spring Hill Jack to national attention. The Lord Mayor of London, Sir John Cowan, made a public statement about the attacks and a reward was offered for the capture of the perpetrator. Despite increased vigilance and several organized searches, spring Hill Jack remained elusive. While the height of spring Hill Jack's activity was in the 19th century, reports of similar beings have persisted into modern times. In August 1877, a group of soldiers at Aldershot's North Camp spotted a strange figure bounding over the tops of trees. Despite giving chase and allegedly shooting at it, they were unable to capture or harm the entity. In 1904, there were sightings in Everton, Liverpool, of a tall man dressed in black who had the appearance of a clergyman and who could leap over houses. The panic was such that residents formed vigilante patrols to protect the neighborhood. More recently, in 1986, a South Herefordshire family claimed to have seen a tall, thin person dressed in black bound across the road in front of their car, easily clearing a 20-foot bank. Similar reports emerged from Sheffield in 2012, where residents of a block of flats reported seeing a dark figure with no features leaping from rooftop to rooftop. These modern sightings suggest that whatever spring Hill Jack might be, the phenomenon may not be confined to Victorian England. Over the years, numerous theories have been proposed to explain the spring Hill Jack phenomenon. These range from the mundane to the fantastic. One of the earliest explanations was that spring Hill Jack was actually a group of aristocrats playing elaborate pranks on the public. This theory gained traction when Henry de la Poire Beresford, the third Marquis of Waterford, was suggested as a possible culprit due to his reputation for drunken pranks. Other theories proposed that spring Hill Jack was an extraterrestrial visitor, experimenting on humans or simply observing our society. Some ufologists have drawn parallels between spring Hill Jack and modern alien encounter reports. Skeptics have suggested that the sightings could be explained by mass hysteria, exaggerated reports of ordinary criminals, or misidentification of known animals. The leaping ability, they argue, could have been achieved through the use of spring-loaded boots or other mechanical aids. More supernatural explanations have also been proposed. Some believe spring Hill Jack to be a demon or other otherworldly entity, pointing to his ability to breathe fire and leap impossible heights as evidence of his non-human nature. Cryptozoologists have speculated that spring Hill Jack could be an unknown species of animal or a humanoid creature yet to be officially discovered by science. Despite nearly two centuries of speculation, no single theory has been able to fully explain all aspects of the spring Hill Jack phenomenon. The legend of spring Hill Jack has left a lasting mark on popular culture. In the years following the initial sightings, his story was popularized in Penny Dreadful's cheap sensationalist publications that were popular in Victorian England. The character has since appeared in numerous books, comics, and films. He's been portrayed as both villain and anti-hero, sometimes fighting supernatural threats to London, other times continuing his reign of terror. Spring Hill Jack has influenced the creation of other fictional characters including early depictions of Batman, 
The character's ability to instill fear and his knack for disappearing into the night bear striking similarities to the caped crusader. In the world of music, spring Hill Jack has inspired songs by artists as diverse as Morrissey and the Meteors. His legend has even spawned a ska-punk band named after him. The impact of spring Hill Jack extends beyond entertainment. His story has become a subject of study for folklorists, historians, and sociologists who see in it reflections of Victorian anxieties about urbanization, social change, and the supernatural. As we conclude this journey through the shadowy world of spring Hill Jack, we're left with more questions than answers. Was he a prankster, a criminal, or something truly supernatural? Did he really exist, or was he a product of mass hysteria and sensationalist reporting? Perhaps the enduring fascination with spring Hill Jack lies precisely in this ambiguity. He represents the unknown, the things that lurk in the shadows of our streets and our minds. In an age of science and reason, spring Hill Jack reminds us that there are still mysteries in the world, still things that go bump in the night. So the next time you're walking alone on a foggy night and you hear an odd sound behind you, just remember, it might be nothing, or it might be the leaping terror himself, Spring Hill Jack, ready to strike again. Izzy stumbled into her flat, slamming the door behind her and engaging every lock. Her hands shook as she fumbled with her phone, re-watching the grainy footage she'd managed to capture. The leaping figure was barely visible, a dark blur against the night sky. But those glowing red eyes, they burned into her, even through the screen. This isn't possible, she muttered, running a hand through her disheveled hair. There has to be an explanation. But the torn sleeve of her jacket and the thin red line on her arm told a different story. Izzy winced as she cleaned the wound, noticing with growing unease that the skin around it had taken on a faint bluish tinge. A sharp rap at the window made her jump. Her heart pounding, she approached cautiously, half expecting to see the terrifying figure crouched on her fire escape. Instead, a raven perched there, its black eyes glittering in the dim light. It cocked its head, letting out a harsh caw before taking flight leaving behind a single black feather. Izzy's phone buzzed, an email from an unknown sender. The truth has teeth, Miss Brown. Are you ready to be bitten? Meet me at the Crossbones graveyard tomorrow at dusk. Come alone again, or don't come at all. She should delete it. She should call the police, show them the footage, report the attack. But something stopped her. The journalist in her, the part that had always hungered for a story that could change everything, wouldn't let this go. With trembling fingers, Izzy opened her laptop and began to research. Hours passed as she delved into centuries-old reports, conspiracy theories, and occult forums. The more she read, the more her rational worldview began to crumble. As dawn broke, Izzy finally succumbed to exhaustion, but her sleep was far from peaceful. In her dreams, she ran through fog-shrouded streets, pursued by a cackling figure that could leap buildings in a single bound. She woke with a start, drenched in sweat, the echo of metallic laughter ringing in her ears. The day passed in a haze of anxiety. As dusk approached, Izzy found herself standing at the gates of Crossbones Graveyard, an unconsecrated burial ground with a dark history. The rusted gates were festooned with ribbons and mementos, offerings to the outcast dead buried there. You came, a raspy voice said behind her. Izzy whirled around to face an elderly woman, her face deeply lined, eyes milky with cataracts. Few have the courage to seek the truth about the leaping terror. Who are you? Izzy demanded. What do you know about Spring Hill Jack? The old woman's laugh was dry as dead leaves. I am no one, child, but I have seen him, oh yes, just as my grandmother did, and her grandmother before her. She reached out, gnarled fingers grasping Izzy's wounded arm. He's marked you. 
The game has begun, and there's no going back. Izzy tried to pull away, but the woman's grip was surprisingly strong. What game? What are you talking about? Listen carefully, girl, the crone hissed. spring Jack is no mere urban legend. He is a gateway, a herald of things that lurk beyond the veil of our reality. And now that you've caught his attention, they've noticed you too. A chill wind whipped through the graveyard, carrying with it the sound of distant, mocking laughter. The old woman's eyes widened in fear. He comes! She cried. Remember, child, the only way out is through. Embrace the terror, or it will consume you. With surprising agility, the old woman darted away, disappearing among the weathered tombstones. Izzy stood alone, the wind tugging at her clothes, carrying whispers she couldn't quite make out. High above, a dark figure perched atop a nearby building, red eyes gleaming. As Izzy watched in horrified fascination, it raised a clawed hand in a mocking salute before leaping into the gathering darkness. Izzy knew she should run, should abandon this madness and return to her safe, rational world. But as she stood there, heart pounding, she realized it was too late. Izzy followed and tried to find the leaping figure. She searched for hours with no sign. Finally, defeated, she went home. The next few days passed in a blur of paranoia and sleepless nights for Izzy. Every shadow seemed to move. Every unexpected sound made her jump. She pored over her research, connecting impossible dots between historical accounts and her own terrifying experience. Her editor had been thrilled with her immersive approach to the story, not realizing the toll it was taking on Izzy's sanity. Dark circles formed under her eyes, and she found herself jumping at every flicker of movement in her peripheral vision. It was on the fourth night that things escalated. Izzy jolted awake to the sound of scraping at her window. Heart pounding, she slowly turned to look. There, etched into the frost on the glass, was a crude stick figure with elongated limbs and glowing red eyes. Panic rising in her throat, Izzy scrambled for her phone to document it. But as the camera flash lit up the room, the image vanished, leaving no trace. I'm losing my mind, she whispered, hands shaking as she lowered the phone. A notification pinged, another email from the unknown sender. The veil is thin, Miss Brown. Time to choose. Pursuer or pursued. Midnight. Highgate Cemetery. The game nears its end. Izzy knew she should ignore it, knew she was in way over her head. But the compulsion to see this through was overwhelming. She had to know the truth, no matter the cost. As she approached Highgate Cemetery, a heavy fog rolled in, muffling the sounds of the city. The ornate gates creaked open at her touch, swinging inward with an invitation that felt more like a threat. The beam of her flashlight cut through the mist, illuminating weathered tombstones and lichen-covered statues. An unnatural silence pressed in around her, broken only by the crunch of gravel under her feet. Suddenly, a dark shape darted across her path. Izzy swung her light towards it, revealing nothing but swirling fog. Another movement to her left, then behind her. She spun in circles, heart racing, as fleeting glimpses of a tall, cloaked figure danced at the edge of her vision. Show yourself, she shouted, her voice sounding small and frightened in the vast necropolis. A low chuckle echoed through the cemetery, seeming to come from everywhere at once. But my dear, the now familiar voice hissed, the fun is in the chase. Something sharp grazed Izzy's cheek, drawing blood. She cried out, stumbling backward. She tripped over a low grave marker, falling hard onto the damp ground. As she looked up, her blood ran cold. There, not ten feet away, stood spring Hill Jack in all his terrible glory. His red eyes blazed in the darkness. A wicked grin split his inhuman face. The game is almost over, Isabel, he said, taking a step closer. 
But the true horror is only beginning. Are you ready to see beyond the veil? Before Izzy could respond, a piercing scream cut through the night, a sound of pure terror that she realized, with dawning horror, was coming from her own throat. spring Jack lunged forward, impossibly fast. Izzy felt cold, clawed hands grasp her shoulders. The world spun, blurred, and then darkness, complete and absolute. When Izzy opened her eyes again, she was no longer in Highgate Cemetery. The world around her was twisted, a nightmarish landscape of impossible geometry and colors that hurt to look at. In the distance, shapes moved that her mind couldn't or wouldn't comprehend. spring Jack's voice whispered in her ear, though she could no longer see him. Welcome, Isabel Brown, to the truth behind the legend. The question is, now that you've seen it, can you ever go back? Izzy wanted to scream, to run, to wake up from this nightmare. But as the alien world pressed in around her, she realized with growing dread that this might be her new reality, a truth far more terrifying than any urban legend. The alien landscape pulsed around Izzy, reality bending in ways that made her eyes water and her mind reel. Fragments of London flickered in and out of existence. A lamppost here, a cobblestone street there, as if two worlds were colliding. What is this place? Izzy gasped her voice sounding distant and distorted. spring Jack materialized beside her, his form shifting and writhing. This, my dear Isabel, is the space between spaces, the cracks in reality where creatures like myself dwell. Izzy stumbled backward, nearly falling into a chasm that hadn't been there a moment before. Creatures like you? There are more? <laughs> a chilling laugh echoed around her. Oh yes, many more. We've been watching your world for centuries, slipping through when the veil is thin. Your legends, your nightmares, they all stem from glimpses of our realm. As if on cue, shapes began to emerge from the swirling chaos. Izzy saw flashes of other infamous creatures, a hulking, emaciated figure with antlers, and a hairy biped reminiscent of Bigfoot and other more terrifying entities she couldn't name. Why show me this? Izzy demanded, fighting to keep her voice steady. Why me? spring Jack's ever-present grin widened. Because, my dear, every so often we need a herald, someone to blur the lines, to make your world question what's real. And you, with your skepticism and your reach, you're perfect. Horror dawned on Izzy as she realized the implications. You want me to spread word of your existence? To make people believe? Belief is power, Jack hissed. The more who believe, the thinner the veil becomes. And when it finally tears... He left the sentence hanging, but Izzy's imagination filled in the terrifying possibilities. She thought of her article of the millions of readers it could reach, if she told the truth about what she had seen? No, Izzy said, surprising herself with the firmness in her voice. I won't be your herald. I won't help you terrorize my world. spring Jack's eyes flared brighter. You don't have a choice, girl. You've seen too much. One way or another, you'll serve our purpose. He lunged at her, Claws extended. Izzy ducked, filling them whistle over her head. She ran, though in this twisted realm, concepts like direction seemed meaningless. You can't escape it, Izzy. It's going to happen. People love the unknown, and they love to be scared. It's going to be our world soon. Izzy's foot caught on something, sending her sprawling. As she hit the ground, her hand closed around something cold and metallic. She looked down to see her old voice recorder, a relic from her early reporting days that she always carried for luck. An idea struck her, 
if belief was their power, then maybe... Izzy pressed record and spoke quickly, her voice shaking but determined. This is Isabel Brown, reporting live. What you're about to hear is the truth about spring Jack and the horrors that lurk beyond our world. But remember, listeners, the power of belief goes both ways. We can choose what to believe in. As she spoke, the world around her seemed to flicker and waver. spring Jack let out a howl of rage, lunging towards her once more. Izzy closed her eyes, clutching the recorder like a lifeline. She focused all her belief, all her will, on one thought. This isn't real. I choose not to believe in this nightmare. The world exploded into chaos around her. Jack's claws were inches from her face when suddenly... Silence. Izzy opened her eyes to find herself back in Highgate Cemetery. The recorder was still clutched in her hand, red light blinking to show it was still recording. Dawn was breaking, the first rays of sunlight dispelling the last of the fog. She was back, but was it over? And what would she do with the story she now possessed? As Izzy stood on shaky legs, she realized that her ordeal might be over, but her real dilemma was just beginning. If she told the truth, or what she believed to be the truth. She risked being labeled a crackpot, ending her career before it truly began. If she debunked the legend as she had originally intended, was she protecting the world or deceiving it? Izzy closed her eyes, remembering spring Jack's words, belief is power. She thought of the responsibility she held, the potential consequences of her words, and she made her decision. Thank you for listening to Freaky Folklore, the podcast about mankind's horrifying legends and myths. Don't forget to follow Freaky Folklore on Spotify and iTunes. If you can, leave the show an honest review on iTunes to help us grow. Freaky Folklore is part of the EerieCast Podcast Network, the home for listeners who love to feel scared. Go to EerieCast.com to find other terrifying podcasts, such as Destination Terror, hosted by me, Carmen Carrion. If you would like to submit an encounter or suggestions for future episodes, you can email them to carmencarrion at gmail.com. You can also follow me on X or Instagram for information on future episodes. Until next time, stay safe out there because this world is a strange one. <laughs>